This is Twit. Is there a grocery delivery industry in China? I'm kind of, I don't know why I'm surprised to hear that. Yeah. So, okay. Follow me for a second. This is a really crazy model that like a hundred million people plus are using in China right now. So it's really big and it's really, really innovative and it's attracting sort of like grandmas almost like aunties, um, you know, people who are really price conscious. So imagine you have a group chat and all of your neighbors are in that group chat and you have sort of like, you know, maybe a local stay at home mom or someone, you know, maybe the local corner store owner, uh, someone who, you know, owns a 7-Eleven and they are the moderator of that group chat. And every single day they give you some crazy deals for fresh food. Um, and all you have to do is in that group chat, say what you want. And the next day, the stay at home mom will get it all delivered to her place and then she'll bring it to you or you go pick it up at the corner store. So they're called group buying groups. Basically. So she gets everything. And then parcels yeah. it out to the uh, to her neighbors. So the like Uber, so Didi, which is the Uber of China, is invested in this. You know, every Tencent, JD.com, Alibaba, all the biggest tech companies are investing in this all over the place. It's a huge frenzy to sort of like get all these people. Because to your point, these are people who didn't usually buy groceries online. They would just go to that corner store right. and get the stuff previously. But what this is doing is it's letting all those big tech companies cut a ton of costs. They get marketing from the stay-at-home mom. They get logistics. They don't have to go to each person's home, right? The stay-at-home mom will take care of that for them. So the problem and she is makes money too, right? She gets yes. paid. She gets about five to ten percent commission. So she's incentivized to get you know as many people as possible. Most of these people have you know anywhere from a couple hundred to nine hundred people that they're managing. So it's huge for them. Holy cow! And it can be you know it can be a big source of business for them. Uh, and it's a crazy trend in China and it's become, you know, really, really wild. Actually two employees at one of the companies that has invested in this actually died um, recently, which sort of set off this huge reckoning about like, you know, are they pushing employees too hard at these companies? You know, is this frenzy worth it? The government is mad about it. But I love it because it's like stay-at-home mom selling vegetables, but everyone in tech is just falling over themselves over it. Well, and as you crazy. point out, uh, it's uh, in the article, it's highly customized because this one person who is managing this group know, gets to know everybody, their interests, their tastes, what they want, what they don't like. So it works. It sounds like it works really well, I have to say. Yeah. And like, come on, if you're like cute little neighbor, like texted you every day and was like, sale on carrots. Are you I kidding? Would totally I would totally do it. do it. Yeah. 50 cents for a bundle of carrots. Like come grab them tomorrow with your eggs and your milk or whatever. Of course I would do it. Do you it think this, could, uh, this model could work in uh, the rest of the world? I think that like, you know, when I think about someone like my mom, who's like not going to navigate Instacart probably, but, you know, knows how to use iMessage. The thing is that it's integrated into WeChat, right? And we uh, don't really have that kind is. of integration yeah. here in the yeah. same way. So I think we're sort of far off. But I do think, you know, this is supercharged by the pandemic. There are way more people buying groceries online than there used to be. Right. And I think that Instacart is like ripe for disruption. I think that like, you know, Whole Foods delivery is not doing anything particularly uh, innovative. And I think that even Amazon and some of these logistics giants are still really struggling with how to make a profit off of this. And these Chinese companies have sort of, you know, figured out a way to do it. Although to be fair, they're offering really, really low prices because these are really price conscious consumers uh, and suppliers are getting mad because they're like, you know, selling a bottle of cooking oil for like less than the, pr the actual, you know, cost to make it. So there are a lot of sort of, it reminds me of when it was like $2 to take an Uber anywhere because they were just pouring money on it and you can get a 50% off Lyft ride if you just open the Uber app and the Lyft app, you know, notice that you were doing that. We all remember this. It feels like that. Yeah. So I do worry it's sort of gimmicky.